you've probably heard about system processors or DSP. And if you've not, then you're about to because they are everywhere. These powerful little pieces of hardware are essential for managing big shows with multiple speakers or even smaller shows with multiple speakers and multiple inputs. But what exactly are they? What kind of processing do they handle? And how do you set up and tweak their settings? We'll look at all of this plus TSP amplifiers. But here's a hint, a lot of it involves EQ. So if you need to brush up on your EQ skills, then you can check out my free guide, Three Steps to Perfect EQ. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. But for now, let's dive in. Let's cover first what DSP is. DSP simply means Digital Signal Processing. A fancy way of saying what DSP does would be saying that it pre-compensates the waveform for the effects that are going to happen to it as soon as it enters the speakers and then the room. A less fancy, more straightforward way of saying that would be that it applies just a little bit of mixing before the audio enters the speakers and is then in the room. So the kind of processing that it applies is EQ, delay, in the case of multiple speakers that need to be time aligned, level setting, in the case of multiple speakers that need to fill a certain area in a room. So it is essentially a little digital mixer which you put just before your amplifiers or before your speakers. You might ask yourself, why don't I just use a mixer then? There's a couple of reasons. One, the DSP has like a nice small form factor. You usually see it mounted in a rack next to the amplifiers or near the stage. And it keeps that processing out of the way. If you think about the scenario where you run a nightclub and you happen to have bands playing and you need an engineer there mixing the bands, and then afterwards you've got a DJ that's going to play, but you don't have an engineer for the DJ because it's a little club and you need to send your engineer home. If you've just got a mixer, then you need to plug your DJ into the mixer and have the mixer just chill in there while your club goes on and people throw pints of beer at each other, or is that just Scotland? If you've got a DSP, then you could finish the gig and plug your DJ directly into the DSP. You know that the DJ is going to get all the benefits of the speaker processing that you've done so far without having to go through the mixer and you can put your mixer safely away in a cupboard and avoid any pints of beer being spilled or people using it as a table. Another reason that you might want to use DSP is if you have a multitude of different inputs that you want to connect to your speaker, either at the same time or at different times. If you're in a venue and you happen to have a lot of guest mixers coming in, touring acts that come with their own mixer, then you want to connect them into your PA system. If you need to mix the support act on your own mixer and you only have two inputs to the speaker system, then you have a problem. You need to run the main act through your mixing board or you need to run through their mixing board. But quite a lot of the time, Touring engineers don't like the idea of this because you might leave some processing on your master bus or anything like that that messes up their show. One thing a DSP does is it allows you to take multiple inputs in and route it out into multiple outputs. The DSP is the signal processing that happens and the loudspeaker management is the distribution of the signal. If you have this situation, then you simply connect your mixer to channel one and two and it distributes the signal out to the speakers and you take the Turing Act and you connect them into inputs three and four. They get the access to the exact same speaker system and processing, but you know that you can just turn your mixer off after your support act, pack it away if you need to, and they know that you are not interfering with their sound at all. So what do they look like? DSPs generally are little rack mounted units that have a multitude of inputs and outputs. You know, they've got multiple XLR inputs for you to connect multiple different mixes, so shall we say, and then they have loads of different outputs that you can connect multiple different speakers to. And that way you can balance the level between the subs, the tops, the front fills, the delays, etc. But let's talk about some additional processing that they handle. DSPs often have what we like to call presets. Nowadays, manufacturers, that is speaker manufacturers, make presets for their speakers that can be loaded into DSP. So what are these presets and why do we want to use them? We want the speaker response to be flat, don't we? We want it to reproduce the sound exactly as we put it in so that we can trust it. But because of the laws of physics and current manufacturing, that's not something that we can achieve. There's always some kind of alteration of the frequency that happens when you push the signal through amplifiers and through speaker cones and that sort of thing. Manufacturers do lots and lots of testing on their speakers though. So although they're trying to aim for flat and are unable to achieve it, they know exactly where their speaker deviates from that flat response. They can give you a preset which you can load into your DSP. And when you load that preset in, that will apply the EQ changes 
to the speaker that the manufacturer recommends from the intense testing that they have done in their manufacturing facility. Also, if you think many speakers are designed to play together in a system, aren't they? We often use tops and subs together, or we use multiple tops in a line array configuration. If the manufacturer knows that you are likely to place one of their subs on the ground, put a pole in it, and then mount a speaker on top of it, the manufacturer can also calculate ideal delay times, crossovers, and generally the phase relationship and level relationship between the speakers, and assign that all into a preset. So instead of you having to think about how you want to set up your speakers and set the crossover and time align them, etc., etc., you just look at the manual and you say, okay, as long as I mount this speaker like this, and I load this preset that I know, then I know that the correct delays and levels are set on the DSP. And all I need to do is send a signal into it and enjoy the show. So a rather innocuous place that you'll come across DSP is in amplifiers. Nowadays, just about every amplifier that I come across has some form of DSP in it. When you get an amplifier from DMB and you connect it up to a DMB speaker system, all you need to do is select the speaker on the amplifier that you are connecting up and it will calculate all of the intended parameters that you need and optimize the amplifier channel for that speaker. It also has protections built in. So if you connect up a DMB E6 speaker to their amplifier and then you select a preset for a B6 sub and you try and amplify that channel and send it to the speaker, the amplifier itself will realize that it is not connected to a sub and refuse to send the signal. So it protects your speaker. And in the olden days, you know, we came out of the mixer and we went into a crossover. Then we came out of a crossover and we went into an EQ, we went into a limiter, and then eventually we plugged it into the amplifiers and plugged it into the speaker system. Nowadays, all of that just happens in the amplifier. And we are able to network multiple amplifiers together, connecting them with ethernet cables. They all work in tandem, and we just need to connect the sound into the first one, and then it distributes it throughout the amplifiers and sends it out to the speakers that we choose. Quite often with DSP and DSP amplifiers, the functionality is not easily available at your fingertips on the device. You might have a few buttons for mute, unmute, and simple selection, but most of the capability of this software comes from connecting up your laptop to it. You usually need to connect using an ethernet connector, download the software for the DSP that you have, whether that is a DSP amplifier from DMB or from Acoustics, or whether it is a standalone processor, DBX, drive rack, for example. Set up your changes using your laptop, and then once everything is good to go, disconnect your laptop and you let it be. Or you keep it connected and you tweak it onto the show. I'll leave a video here that shows you how to set up and tune a speaker system using software like Smart, which goes hand in hand with this DSP stuff. If this is helpful, please subscribe and let me know what DSP you're using, if you're using one. Until next time, goodbye.